Good evening and welcome to a very special event. Avid Learning with Nature Mort New Delhi proudly present an exhibition walkthrough with leading contemporary artist Subodh Gupta and curator and artistic director of the Prada Foundation Milan, Germano Chilant, through Subodh's new exhibition, Unhad Unstruck. This show marks Subodh's return to Mumbai after 10 years. In these most recent works, Subodh explores the primary material for which he is known, metal in all its diversity. Included in the exhibition, as you will see on our walkthrough, are sculptures, installations, even paintings using metal. The works, monumental in scale and dramatically installed, draw on the artist's background in theatre and most are activated with light or sound. Subodh is interested in highlighting how one can find the universal in banal objects and witness the divine in the most humble of means. He is joined today by Germano, who was the curator of his 2014 solo retrospective at the NGMA in New Delhi. Germano has described his work as having an uncontrollable eruptive force and an avalanche-like quality. Before they begin, a little bit more about each. Subodh Gupta was born in 1964 in Kagol, Bihar and studied at the College of Art, Patna, before moving to New Delhi, where he continues to live and work. Trained as a painter, Subodh was very uninhibited about his use of media and scale. Arranging traditional utensils, pots and pans, he approaches ready-made items with a Duchampian irony while also offering social commentary, playing on the cliched images of India's rapidly changing society. In 2007, his sculpture, Very Hungry God, was exhibited in front of the Palazzo Grassi, parallel to the Venice Biennale. In 2013, he was awarded the Knight of the Order of Arts and Letters among the highest honors given out by the French government. In 2014, his mid-career survey was seen at the NGMA and was curated by Germano. And in late 2015, his monumental sculpture, When Soak Becomes Spill, was installed in front of the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Welcome to both. Germano Chilant is a renowned art historian and curator, internationally acknowledged for coining the name of the Arte Povera movement. He has authored over 100 publications, including books and catalogues, and has curated exhibitions in prominent international museums and institutions worldwide. From 1989 to 2008, Germano was the senior curator at the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum in New York. In 1997, he served as director of the Venice Biennale and he has been a contributing editor to Art Forum since 1977. Germano has been director of the Fondazione Prada in Milan since 1995. Welcome to Germano and over to you. Okay, normally when uh, Subod and I doing this kind of introduction, we do kind of duet. We don't dance, but more or less. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of a talk show, you know, just you get somebody like me doing the David Letterman and there's the famous guest, which is Subod. And the idea is to improvise. You know, we don't have any paper, so we stimulate each other in a way that we find uh, sometimes discussion and you know arguing perhaps sometimes and so is a, is not kind of a normal introduction and I, we start immediately with my experience actually of Subod and uh, this show has a kind of particular can you, it's okay can you hear everybody yeah. okay it's a particular connotation, that's what I find in comparison with the show that we did in, uh, in New Delhi, because it was a kind of anthology. Uh, this show is, a, for me anyway, is more abstract. It has a 
kind of a more uh, spiritual connotation, ideal connotation, which means that the object, they are not so uh, iconic. They are part of a, a, of a surface, or they are part of a, a, a gong or anything that is part of his uh, um, recent piece. But for me, they are dealing mostly with the void of the utensil. So this is a void. These are the void with the light, and actually the sound is the sound of the void. Also inside, you cannot realize, but there are people inside. They're looking at you through the holes. So it's kind of reversing. The void is looking at you. And the void is producing sound. And the void is producing light. And the void in the next room is producing a huge sound and huge light. So are you, uh, as, as a shift, are you feel this kind of shift in comparison with the previous work it was more narrative, you know, the taxi, the, the Vespa, the old, you know, ritual of food. In this way, it's, you know, nature is there is a cube, which is kind of minimalist, but inside the cube, there are human beings. So, how you feel this kind of more oriental, more spiritual, more, if you want to say, sacral uh, situation? Yeah, thank you, Germano. First yeah. of all, thank you for coming, man. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, thank you everybody to, for this evening. Yes, uh, uh, like I said previously, ki my knowledge about art is not my education of college. It's my education of life. And the life I live in it, what I understand and experience I try to make my practice, my art, out of it. The previous work of mine has been very narrative, like Vespa or the uh, bicycle or many other works, because those are the uh, object or day-to-day -day life. I used to see it every day, and I thought, must freeze that moment, must uh, capture that time and uh, try to, and I was very involved with that and I done it with given my everything to make that. And slowly, like when I'm working for last 20, more than 20, over the 20 years now, I feel there is a many other way to express yourself too. And uh, my experience become a little, uh, uh, and looking the art over the world is make me more minimal and uh, little more. Uh, since in India we have so much spiritual and so much going on, and there was vast knowledge about inside world and again outside world and how able to take it from there. So I taking that advantage to make minimal art and in little bit spiritual too in same time. Yeah, but also I think what is important to understand that, uh, or to notice, that this work is more performative. There's a performance. Every piece is a performance. You know, the light changing in the, in the painting, mm -hmm. the, the sound piece, and this with the people inside. So you are activating, life is becoming part of it, is not only a representation of normal life in India, mm -hmm. to carry the milk, to carry the water, you know, to, to realize and to, you know, tra translate it in a monument. You know, what you did with the previous work, mm -hmm. you, became, you did this kind of sacral homage to the normal life. You know, people Absolutely. in the street, yeah. the poor people carrying uh, food for everybody and, and translate in bronze. Bronze, as you know, I wrote in, in the book, is a very classical and, uh, and you know, let's say, monumental. You know, to give monument to a, a taxi, to give a monument, translate a monument of, of uh, carrying milk. This one is less monumental, it's monumental in scale but not on the monumental in symbols. I mean, and is monumental through the activation of it. 
So it's, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. it's performative in a way that uh, our, it's kind of chemical reaction. You know, you react between two elements, the, the life, the body, and what is not anymore life, but was life, which is the place Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and the dress. So are you, why you need this kind of dialectical moment now? Ah, <laughs> but I will go uh, uh, a uh, uh, theater aspect of the, my works. Like uh, I said it previously as well, uh, many of you know that I started, before I went to art school, I, I was doing a small theater in my town. So theater been part of my life uh, since previous. Uh, uh, so still I could not able to left 100% and you can see in my work in many aspects. So theater part is there and some, and I also worked with the light many years ago, 1995, I made few painting with the light that time and again coming back in that aspects of the light. But uh, uh, speaking about the, these cube and utensils, and uh, like you see the uh, marks in these utensils, and these, in, these all marks is a very uh, individual marks. There is a similarity, there is a, a kind of, they look all very similar. It's almost like a, a uh, human palm reading. Every palm look like a palm, but every line of palm then not match to each other and billion of us. In the same way, these all utensils, thousands of utensils, they stack together, look like a very similar, but they're very different to each other. And each utensils, they serve the people many years, the food, and uh, in happy mood, in angry mood, and in crying mood, whatever mood. And so each utensil, they have uh, their own history. And uh, that's it, but I don't want to go detail in it, but interesting things, uh, uh, if you look at it, it looks like uh, the solid, sometimes maybe you feel that this is a sad, but honestly, this is a not a sad, because when this utensil was collected uh, uh, by the uh, uh, vendor, they're going to collect it and is going to melt it and turn it into the brick anyway. So they was going to rebirth. In, uh, in their form. And what I'm trying to uh, 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 portrait here, so like you, when you see this form, when this form, and when you take the image, it's almost look like a cosmos. So I'm interested in that uh, uh, these days about the, uh, not about what happening among us, also what's happening in our universe and many things. So th this, this works, I made it in that aspect. And I, now that you talk, I see as a fresco of different yeah. people. You yeah. know, in the, in the old time, you have mm -hmm. portraits, mm -hmm. you know, on the large. And I heard that you started at the beginning as painting. Yes. As a portion, it was yeah. a kind of yeah. small painting. Mm -hmm. So in a certain way, there was a representational element that now you describe as face, life, naturally, because every element has a component of light. So it's kind of renaissance in a today way, you know, that you, but also why you need this, this life element inside? What, what is your feeling? Because they look at you or, so the each utensil, because it's a life, look at the people life? Yeah, I agree. So also uh, like uh, what's happening in the world today about the thousands of people migrating from the each space to other space. And the people who left home, and they make their new home, they feel also they're stuck because it's not their land. And the same time people could not able to go, they also are stuck. So it's the cube is representing thousands of people, life and same time like a migration. The people who are inside can't come out and people who are outside can't go in. That was the little motive behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sorry. Mm -hmm. they are in a certain way, it's between freedom and, and prison from... Kind of. Uh, and I'm not sure who is free and who is... Uh, yeah, that's the, normally... We are, we are nobody knows <laughs> yeah. what is outside <laughs> of, the, of, the gate, of, the, of the fence. Yeah. When you go in the zoo, mm -hmm. who is the one in the zoo? Mm -hmm. Us yeah, or, or, the, or the animal? <laughs> no. So there's always this kind of... A, yeah. And it's interesting that in the next room, you have mirrors. Okay, mm -hmm. so... The mirrors is 
kind of uh, different portion the, or different way of looking and reflecting yourself. So you can reflect with the people inside mm -hmm. and you can feel alive, but you are stuck and you know, and you cannot uh, get out or you can see as a representation of every person that went through this kind of uh, consumed life. But I think what is very interesting is also the, the idea of uh, nature still recuperation of your culture, okay? It's representing always your roots, okay? In a certain way, but your roots are here, and inside is a new generation or not? Well, this is the old generation. What are the new one? Uh, well, this, this definitely become a old, it yeah. will no doubt about it, and inside is a new generation for sure. Okay, <laughs> and if we move to this yeah. piece, I think it's very important because again, there is a dialectical element between the taken by the magnet is uh, is every time change because the magnet interact with the change that will and will create this kind of different alive form. So it's in form and form again. You know that's. That's the same piece uh, in the center. There is informed reality by the living people and the form, but also between history and the old history and industrial history. How you feel about this kind of, again, dialectical situation between industry and past? Yeah, I, I Good question, but uh, Jamanu, I take it very differently, this works, and I take it in many motive, many form. First, when I see this coming out, it's almost like uh, some bucket is coming from the well, or, or, or some form is coming from the well, and something gone wrong here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, many forms come, and same time, it's very spiritual. It's, it's like also kind of form of the well, when it go up, and when it's bang, it's like a sound of, uh, not so harassed sound, uh, by the way, what I was thinking to making it very hard sound, but somehow in this space I find it sound is little, uh, not so hard in the sense it's like a, well, a sound of well or uh, something. But uh, again, it's like uh, talking to yourself and like a biplas and something like, uh, you, uh, uh, you remember the, in Muharram the people uh, beat themselves uh, and it's something related to not exactly but some kind of that kind of feeling and that kind of form what we are feeling today in day to day life in the, uh, all over the world and that's a little bit, I don't know how to react to that but it's a... It's so it's kind of more, it's an individual that is feeling or not his feelings, producing the sound uh, but also is the sound of culture. You know, because this, as you explained to me, is a tool for producing food in India. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. This, it's the sound this, this of... This vessel, you can use it, uh, they, people use it in the temple and mosque to make it uh, food in it and distribute the people. But and also there is a dialogue between silence mm -hmm. of the object and the, and the, and the nature, the, the sound, yeah. uh, which is very uh, powerful and dramatic in a certain way. That, that you stopped. did for this show. And they have more element than before. Before was a fragile representation because it was canvas. Mm -hmm. It was a traditional representation of the vessel or the utensil. And now you are doing this kind of soft painting on a very harsh surface. But not only, you have a performance element, which is the light which is sometimes appears, sometimes disappears. So you have possibility to listen to the light, like the sound, or to the surface. So you, you play again with a, a double element, which before, with the previous painting, were kind of absolute. You know, it was a representation of a place of food. Or, and also the way of painting has changed because all the chemical part, you know, the industrial part is getting involved, which uh, more or less also the piece we, we left has an industrial connotation. That's why I would say industrial, yeah. because is dealing with the harsh condition of life and industrial is taking over. So how, 
how you see the painting and how you see this kind of lightning, because there's a lot of uh, uh, history about lightning, there's land art, you know, there's a lot of history connect with this uh, uh, energy. There's an energy inside. There's an energy inside the cube, mm -hmm. which is developed. There's energy inside the, the, the sound piece. So the soul, and there's the next one, mm -hmm. there's energy by, by the surface. So w what means for you? Do you in, want to include energy? Because that's kind of generational uh, discovery in the 60s, okay? That my generation was dealing with chemical change, performance, and so. I, I you feel in your language this new yeah, element? Uh, I agree. Uh, when you're describing it in industrial look, and I'm looking at it, and I totally agree with you. The metal, the form of rustic form of the metal, and the print, and the kind of solidness, and the, even including the size. Uh, I'm just talking about the material here and does make the very industrial, no doubt about it. Why I choose in it? I don't know. But definitely I like the surface and uh, working with the metal so many times and I thought, oh, since uh, I was taking the photograph of the aluminium uh, utensils and these, all the photograph you see, image you see in these works uh, uh, is uh, aluminium huge utensils like, like I said over there. And I, I, I painted on them and I printed up them in the background too. So uh, when I was making it, like I earlier said, each utensil, they the look like a cosmos and some kind of planet. And that excited me. And I, I thought, let's use that element in the painting. And uh, that's basically what I did. Also notice that this painting, the food is not there. It's more, it's difficult to, to visualize also, perhaps. Yeah. Which it, means you are dealing more with the object and the surface of the object. Because it's an aerial view. Absolutely, but same time, uh, like, like I said, it's like what the uh, food definitely been cooked in these yeah. vessels and uh, feed in, uh, the family eaten it in, from this vessel and uh, so many times it must be they eaten it and later after using this gone thrown away but this utensil itself they have a very emotional history where, uh, where in this painting you will not describe at all but you can see in this painting this utensil become a, like a cosmos and planet so it's uh, taken the much bigger form than us and, and it's like someone gi given us something very huge and sometimes become a bigger in their own perspective, uh, uh, visually too. Uh, and uh, like, uh, you know why I ask for the uh, uh, cosmos, Jamano, mm -hmm. and why I'm which in interested? I do like uh, 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 news about the UFO and the alien, and uh, I think about all the time, ki definitely something beyond there, uh, apart from us. That interest always carry me, no doubt. And that interest, uh, somehow, how you become in my work, is very different way I able to describe it is coming here a little bit. In this show, it's whole show is coming out. And like uh, uh, I was the other day, I was watching the documentary and where the Stephen Hawking said, Ki if you're looking for the another planet or, or alien or some pieces over there, it's not like answer is in up there and go and, you're able to go and find it. Answer is in our planet Earth. And the same way, if my cosmos, uh, my universe, uh, if I'm looking at is, I find it is my, in my plate and my huge utensils and those surfaces and I, what I'm doing it, yeah. So you become a visual astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's true. It's a it's very not. interesting point because if you think about Duchamp, yeah. you know, Duchamp was seeing the, the object from the, the, the high side. You know, there's always the object that he was looking were as an astronaut. It was the, the pissoir or the structure or anything was on the floor and so on. So the vision from above, it's, you know, you can see here too, you know, that you're trying to not be part only of the landscape of object, but you try to have a high vision of space. Here, the, the, the people had to come from the high level. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so they, they come like mm 
an astronaut inside. You know, they have natural ladders, but you can parachute them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay? You can parachute them. So there is a parachute also in the piece there. Yeah. Okay? It's just taking and then landing. So it's all this vision from above that is part of the history of art. The vision from above is changing the history of art because of Duchamp. So the object can, when you see the object, you see always on the floor, in, in your case also. So in a certain way, you try to change and enlarge the vision from be inside and try to be above kind of area yeah, view. Yeah, really the area view, view, because yeah. we travel so much, yeah, okay? Yeah, we yeah. travel, and when we go through mm -hmm. the airplane, we change our perspective. You know, the object becomes small or, or this kind of thing. So today, mm -hmm. the, not only the area view, the space view mm -hmm. is part of our culture. Yeah. So you can be traditional using the old object, but then that's why I say visual yeah. astronaut. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Should we go all in another room, or you wanted to ask some question here? Yeah, yeah. I or think it would be nice to. Yeah. I think uh, we yeah. we can do. Any question, anybody? Question. The piece mm. is working now. Mm. Mm. No. If you have any question, otherwise we pass in the second part of the show. Don't be shy. Can you say something about the colors that come to you? It's not just metal. You obviously have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very interestingly, uh, but funny thing, those, those uh, uh, aluminium utensils, when it was lying in the scrapyard, and I went to select them and try, try to take picture. Some of them with the maybe the used with the tea kettle, or uh, even the cooking milk or boiling milk or whatever. But they lying it over there for many months or whatever, water drop and something come in oxidize and they take the orange form and the blue form, fungus, and that, those effects, uh, uh, when you take image, then it really is very col colorful and I, no doubt, de uh, deliberately I put a little bit more color on that. So it's all uh, make it a little different, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go another one. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of. Anyway, don't get, uh, there will be another moment where we cannot speak because of the sound. And uh, now you can reflect in the mirror. Mirrors is an old tradition of, uh, uh, in the ancient time, you know, to self-portray, to identify yourself, but also to see you in the context of reality. So it's an object that... So a mirror, as I said, you know, across the history from, you know, from the cave time, you know, you always mirror yourself and always you find yourself uh, closing, but when you, you, you leave the, the mirror, you approach in a different way and so on and so on. Anyway, the mirror, in this case, Tsubot is not only a mirror, but is performing also, and not only uh, performing, but is destroying image at the end, you know, yeah. because it's getting foggy, you know, I've seen it. it the, the, the reflection disappears. So there are two elements, not only the sound, which can refer to the other piece in the other room with the, with the metal, the, their own, his own sound, their own sound, but also confusing the vision. Why you like this kind of confusion of vision? I like the idea while 
you looking at it and then your own image come and then suddenly again the image you made as a painting is again getting destroyed uh, and uh, i i intrigue the idea about the again theoretical part how we talked about earlier how the theoretical part is coming in my work you can see in this particular work too it's like a, a viewer itself become a piece of artwork and same time a, a theoretical form of theoretical too and with the sound and everything so that part is there but same time this uh, uh, work is called unstruck and unstruck uh, i taken the title from anhad anhad uh, kabir uh, sufi poet uh, anhad garje so uh, anhad i translated it come in unstruck and it's unstruck is sound of the universe yeah, sound of whatever trying the sound of the universe and sound of our human inner body too so that's how i liked it and same time what's happening in the world uh, like uh, each time we a uh, kind of sound we hear the sound is not uh, the sound what you get made sound is also can be news sound could be anything no sound your own sound so sound has a very uh, uh, huge part to play uh, uh, in uh, uh, various way uh, and i like that aspects of that sound and uh, same time like shocking you no shock you the news shock you tsunami shock you to intervals shock you uh, and uh, various news shock you and we are doing our day to the life very normally and what sometime suddenly you you get uh, what's happened and what's happened th that's something i don't know how to describe it but same time that that i try to bring in this work on a struggle for me is also saying that uh, you cannot be sure about anything because uh, you know there is kind of today insecurity okay so the image that you are looking or yourself or the object is not secure is not no. safe okay and today nobody's safe okay nobody's sure that this image will stay yeah okay yeah. so in a, in a kind of context of social moment the the change is part of the kind of insecurity and everybody is afraid of something and because you don't know the, because nothing is sure mm -hmm. and uh, another thing that I, I want to ask why in this case uh, you use the form the format of the painting you know this each is kind of the visual code of a painting Will it will be not more dramatic to have a complete no, environment? No, that's, that's I'm coming to. <laughs> so suddenly, Zermano, you've given me idea. Next time, how will make my art? <laughs> First of all, this was very convenient. It, it in India, any seat you go and buy, they get eight eight by four, eight by four. So I'm okay. Eight by four. If I get mirror seat, finish steel. I will use that in my work, and that was very convenient to use it. So it's, kind of a, uh, it's a found uh, object, it's a found object yeah, in, in that way, and it's helped me to uh, uh, experiment. experiment and uh, uh, rehearsal it and able to express myself. But uh, honestly, you gave me a very good idea, and I'm going to do it next time. <laughs> So yeah, because other you will. Yeah, I can will. I can create the whole seat of the room mirror and the sound that is coming be from totally that will lost. be yeah, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. will totally. And mm -hmm. this object, which is naturally a little bit more classic and in your style, as I was saying, Peter, yesterday, why this huge enlargement? Uh, because it's a natural utensil, but become a, as I said, the spaceship, a new. It's kind of imposing. It's become monumental. And you never did so monumental. You know, you did accumulation that became a com uh, uh, monumental. In this case, the object is, uh, is transformed and could be, you know, uh, part of the body. Could be, you know, you can see about, you know, breathing or, you know, kidney or, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, there is a figuration, especially this form. Mm -hmm. uh, why you, you enlarge so much? Uh, not because I wanted to make everything at large, but sometimes I do. So in this case, I wanted to make it large work, and this p work is called Birth of the Star. And uh, basically, I found I made it previous uh, long ago, almost eight, 
10 years ago to Itunsil jointing together. Basically, I put two lota together and made my arc in 97, actually, when I started first. So this idea of two, uh, two vassal coming together and facing to each other uh, is some kind of uh, 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 um, uh, emotional uh, uh, and uh, uh, love value they saw. And same time, it's also the light first time you use it. I never used the light before. And uh, 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 light somehow given me the, it's kind of like two cosmos and like gliding star and how the uh, earth is formed or uh, the, what happened in galaxy, something about that. It's not exactly, but uh, um, I made it and I have to say something, so I have to make the story. <laughs> Good on that. Uh, I can see also the, the kind of uh, battery, you know, between two energy producing uh, electricity in a certain way, you know. So, as you said, there's a couple, you know, there is a relationship. So, it's uh, two different in individuals that get together and they create the third element, which is light, as you said, in spaceship also, you know, that's what I was... Very interesting study, some gentleman man come and it's, it looked like an organ too. <laughs> and it's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay, some question before the sound starts again. Come on, we are not bad boy. Yeah, <laughs> because of the scale that you've used and the material that you've used here, stainless steel, I hope you don't mind my saying, uh, it does remind you of Anish Kapoor's works, who does similar large format stainless steel so why and not if you wanted to see that way? interpretation of course are different but uh, uh, i just want to make an observation no doubt about it sometimes it does you can't escape it some visual uh, so much visual uh, uh, language you've seen it uh, visually you've seen so many works sometimes it's just in back of your mind come same thing no so no doubt about it a little bit that influence you can see is there but also, a niche is more abstract, completely abstract. Okay, it's just uh, try to avoid his own culture in a certain way. You know, from the beginning on, he had an Indian period, what I call. But you know, he tried to avoid this kind of historical reference to his own culture, and so he's making more an abstract uh, object or uh, a mirror or whatever, plexi, and so on and so on. With uh, Subod, you have history with it, which is completely a different approach. Nature, the material, everybody can use. You know, you have uh, uh, Donald Judd, you have the history of material is part of the history of art. And specularity is also, you know, you have Pistoletto, you have tons of people, but it's the way of using the material and the form and the narrative. So for me, uh, Subod is a, a storyteller in a certain way, about his own culture. While Anish is trying to become abstract and international and trying to avoid uh, this kind of uh, local identity. I can, I can say personal history with Anish. I did the first monogra monograph on his work. And while working on the collection of pictures and writing, and at a certain moment I said, Manish, that's 9885, it didn't work. He said, oh, no, you know, that's not good, you yeah, know, no answer. Then as an art historian, I say, oh, come on, you know, I want to know, and I want to see what kind of material you produce. And it was a period that he, was called, he called himself the Indian period, and he, don't, he didn't want to have any book. So just to tell you, because he was concerned about the international communication that he was trying to break through with his own work while, you know, a next generation can be, no, I'm proud of it. It's not criticism, it's just reality. You know, you can see that he was abstract and you can see that is more, let's say, realistic. And realistic means content also, it's very political. Abstraction is not political, so that's also a different point of view.
Thank you, Saboda and Germano, for this wonderful and very rare insight into these new works and into this spectacular new show. Uh, thank you to Nature Mort for partnering with us today. As Avid wraps up this year, we want to give you something to laugh about. So come tickle your funny bone at our concluding episode of the KGAF series, which will be on humor in the city. Do visit our social media for more. Have a wonderful evening. And a fantastic evening.